Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a good day. Mine's been okay. Uh, if, you've, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. It only takes a second to hit the subscribe button, so please do so. Um, but if, you have, if you're not new and you've watched the videos before, you will know that we're a big supporter of women's boxing. Women's boxing is currently flying. It's doing well. Uh, growing all the time, of course. New faces appearing. Uh, you go to Australia, you've got, you know, Ebony Bridges and uh, Sky Nicholson. In England, you've got Savannah Marshall, Chantel Cameron, America, Clarissa Shields. Well, it seems that most countries have, you know, um, you know, good, good quality female fighters and, and the sport is growing. But I wanted to do a little video on um, one of the pioneers, one of the great British women's pioneers, a lady by the name of Barbara Buttrick. And Barbara was born in 1929. She is still alive. She is 92 years of age. And if she makes it to December, and why wouldn't she? She'll be 93. Amazing lady. Absolutely amazing lady. She was um, under five feet tall. She was a 4'11", she's listed as on, on box rec. And this lady, um, how did she get into boxing? Well, she was always a bit of a tomboy. She said in interviews. Uh and on one occasion, she was, I think, kicking a football around with her, one of her mates. And they came in and her friend's mum said, don't bring those muddy boots in here. And she put some newspaper on the floor for Barbara and her friend to take the boots off. And Barbara looked down at the newspaper and it was about the boxing booth female fighter, a lady named Polly Burns. Um, if you know a little bit about the history of boxing, you'll know about the boxing booths. Uh, you know, they were uh, boxing booths were very, very common. They'd have a fighter in the booth. And if you could go a round or three rounds or whatever it was, you'd win a few. You'd, you'd win five bob or something like that. You know, 25 pence in in uh, modern money. <laughs> you know, so Polly Booth, uh, Polly Booth, uh, Polly Burns was um, quite a well-known female fighter in the booths. And Barbara saw this article, read it and thought, I can have, I can do that. You know, if Polly can do it, I can do it. So she got into boxing, but predictably she was met with a lot of resistance because she was female. And in those days, if you were female and you did anything that was sort of tomboyish boxing, it actually didn't have to be tomboyish. It could be something that was like acting, for example, which isn't considered to be a particularly, you know, um, butch profession. But women who did anything that that was that hinted at independence were considered to be either lesbians or sluts or there was some sort of uh, slur put against them. I mean, acting, female, you know, if you're, oh, I want to be an actress. Well, oh, yeah, they're all, they're all whores, you know, acting, you know, all, all, the, all the women are whores and all the men are puffs. You know, it was that sort of attitude. And boxing, you were either a dyke or you were, I don't know, you know, some, some woman of ill, of ill repute who probably liked a few beers and then ended up in bed with random men, you know. That was the attitude towards women boxing and doing lots of other things that we now take for granted. It's difficult. So you've got to remind modern day generations that that was the case, you know. It's, I'm not making it up. But Barbara, she weren't having none of this. She thought, no, I want a box. I want a box, you know. And So by day, she was a typist. She got a job as a typist. And... Um, you know, she, she got herself a trainer, male trainer, and in the evening she would practice, at weekends she'd practice. And when she got to, uh, you know, fully to become a fully grown woman, because uh, she started when she was in her mid-teens, she thought, okay, well, where can I go to box? I can't find any opponents. No other girls wanted to do it because of the, the slur against them if they dared put on a pair, a pair of boxing gloves. So Barbara, God bless her, she up sticks and went to America where there were female fighters. Um, North North America, actually, not just the US, but she she fought in Canada, she fought in the US, and eventually uh, she. There's a little bit of of conjecture over where how, what her record was. It's hard to define it because I looked on. I'd always thought she'd had about thirty two fights, thirty wins, a draw, and a defeat. I think, but if you go on box reg, it says she only had four fights. So a lot of these are hard to verify, but. There's no doubt that she did fight in America quite extensively. And in 1957, um, she defeated a woman by the name of, I can't remember the name offhand, uh, well, not Cooper, Cuba, Cougar, something like that. Um, Phyllis Kugler, Phyllis Kugler, that was it. 
That was in 1957, and that was in San Antonio. Um, was it Kugler? It was Kugler. Phyllis, I'm sure it's Phyllis Kugler. I'll have to check on that. I'll, I'll pin a comment if I'm wrong, but I think it was Phyllis Kugler. Kugler. And she fought Phyllis in San Antonio in front of a lot of people. It was quite a big old, um, quite a big, uh, big event. And she won. And she became the first recognised women's world champion. Um, now, of course, again, there was plenty of debate about who was the first female world champ. But this was a, a big fight. This wasn't just a sort of sideshow, a gimmick, a freak show. This was a, you know, a proper fight. And Kugler was all of nearly all of, of uh, Barbara's opponents were much bigger than her. because She was a, she was a flyweight, a very, very small flyweight, probably a straw weight by today's standards. And she, she was less than five feet tall. So there were photographs of her fighting much, much bigger women who looked like they're you know, at least welterweight. And Phyllis was no, no, no different. I think she was. I don't think she was uh, a massive woman. I think she, but I think she was sort of bantamweight level. And I think it was for the a version of the women's uh, world bantamweight title, probably one of the first versions. So Barbara became a world champ. She carried on fighting. Again, there is some disagreement about what her record was. But she eventually retired in 1960. I think she made a bit of a comeback 15 years later for a very short period of time. But but come the 1990s, and as I say, she's still alive. She's in her, she's in her 90s now. But in the 1990s, she founded uh, an organisation uh, which uh, actually recognised women's boxing. It was designed to, to, to give world title belts to women and some sort of structure to the women's game. Um, and uh, this was successful. This, you know, they, lots of women fought for these for these uh, world titles, um, and a lot of women became recognised as legitimate fighters rather than just, like I say, you know, a sort of sideshow, a gimmick, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Um, the organisation that she founded was called the Women's International Boxing Federation, um, and it, it became an established sanctioning body. Um, it did, I don't think it lasted. I think the IBF and the uh, the WBC, WBO, w, WBA, when they got when they started to take women seriously, the Women's International Boxing Federation sort of took a backseat or died a death. But there's no doubt that Barbara's efforts raised the profile of women's boxing, and women were taken seriously as fighters for the you know maybe the first time. Um, it's also it's also worth mentioning going back to to when Barbara was a fighter that she would mix with a lot of very, very famous names. She even trained at the Fifth, uh, Fifth Street Gym, where Muhammad Ali was and Angelo Dundee was. And she got to know uh, both those guys, you know, quite well. Um, Dundee, he gave her lots of advice. Um, Ali, she, this is when Ali was still Cassius Clay. She knew him then. And she said he was very, very confident. You'd never have guessed, would you? <laughs> As she was saying, yeah, you know, I, I like the guy. Yeah. Um, and of course, he was just a young young kid. No one knew that he was going to become the absolute, you know, probably the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. He is, in my opinion. Uh, but Barbara knew him as just this, you know, mouthy kid who was very, very talented. Uh, but Dundee, um, Chris Dundee and Angelo Dundee, she knew both of those. Angelo Dundee gave her lots of tips. And Barbara's comments about uh, boxing styles are also quite interesting because she she talked about the styles of, of fighters, you know, men or men or women, there weren't many women around, but the, the fighting style of being more as being more flat footed and you would shuffle forward or shuffle to the side. And, you know, that sort of Joe Lewis sort of style that was considered to be the most effective um, way of doing things economical with the feet. But you make every punch count. You get into getting into proper position, um, whereas the more modern well, I guess you could say Ali sort of, or Robinson, probably Robinson and Ali together were the f two of the first purveyors of this style, but a more dancing style, a much more movement with the legs, more emphasis on movement, using a lot of energy, a lot of, from the waist down, rather than conserving the energy with all the leg, the leg muscles with limited movement. So you went from that sort of shuffle, soft shoe, soft shoe shuffle to the sort of more dancing, jitterbugging style, especially someone like Sugar Ray Leonard used. Um, and Barbara's comments on how that, that changed, how the styles gradually evolved, if you like. They're really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah, that is Barbara Buttrick. She was originally from Yorkshire, um, but ended up, like I say, fighting in America and settled in America, had family in America. I think she lives over there now in her old age. 
God bless you, Barbara. Um, what a wonderful pioneer she was for women's boxing. Uh, but she's a good old Yorkshire lass. If you see her interviewed now, the Yorkshire accent's still there. And a uh, tough girl. Um, yeah, so that's Barbara Buttrick for you. So all you female fight fans and all you female fighters who are watching this, you know, give a little fist bump to Barbara Buttrick, who uh, paved the way for your success. She wasn't the only one. Maybe I'll do a few more videos about, you know, the lesser known female pioneers. But uh, did you like this video? If so, hit the like button. And like I say, subscribe if you're new. Uh, women's boxing's going places. And um, yeah, I'll do another video at some point. Thanks for your time as always. Uh, if you've got any comments, leave them below. I like reading them. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves. We'll speak again. Bye-bye for now.